I really like finding questions on Reddit um, because I think they're 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 very interesting questions. And if someone takes the time to post it on on Reddit, then probably a lot of other people have similar questions. And that's the kind of things that I look for to answer. So I'm going to answer this question to the best of my ability. And and in fact, this question's got a lot of parts to it. So let's just get get right into it. And and the first the title is a question that's actually different than this one. The the first question says why electric potential decreases in a uniform electric field. And then the second part talks about a uniform plate. Um, so let's just start off with the relationship between electric field and electric potential. And I'm going to I'm not going to go into every single detail of this cuz I want to I want to I don't want to have an hour long lecture. I just want a base thing. I have I have some things here but let's get to that in a second. Let's let's ask the following question. Why does the gravitational potential increase or decrease increase let's say increase in a uniform gravitational field so here's the earth the surface of the earth and if i'm near the surface of the earth i do have a uniform gravitational field that points down so g is the gravitational field it would have a value of 0 negative 9.80 newtons per kilogram now what, why does this matter and how do we get the gravitational potential, which would be U equals MGY. So as I move up, then U increases. That's a gravitational potential energy, not the potential. And in, in the electric potential is the potential energy per charge, but the same idea. Well, all of this comes from the work energy principle. So we define work as uh, it's actually an integral. The integral from point 1 to point 2 of F dot delta R. It's a path integral. Uh, I'll, I'll put a link down below to my explanation of path integrals. I wrote it on medium. Um, so maybe you'll find that useful. I don't want to go into the whole detail. But uh, So work is an integral. Uh, if, if, the force is, if the force is constant for this work done by moving from point 1 to point 2 up here, if F is constant, and the path is constant, then this would be just written as F dot delta R. Because we're dealing with a constant field, and I could write this as MG dot delta R. Right? So that's the gravitational field. That's the definition of work, and we know that work is the change in energy. It turns out that for some fields, like the gravitational field, like the electric field, it does the work done does not depend on the path, but only on the beginning and end points. So if I go from here to there along that path, and then I go um, along this path, I get the same work. And in that case, it turns out that it's easier, it's useful to take this equation. I'll write it out like this: uh, m g dot delta r equals delta e, the change in energy for the system and move this to the other side. So I get zero equals negative mg dot delta r plus delta e. And so I write this as delta u. So delta u is negative mg dot delta r, which is negative the work done. So it's negative one to two f dot dr. So that's why there's that negative sign there. And, and it's important to realize that there is no potential. The potential doesn't matter. We, we call this potential, but it's due to the work going from point one to point two, and I write that, but that's not real. What really matters is the change of potential. Delta U is U2 minus U1, or MG delta Y. That's important. Okay, so now why does the electric potential, so this is where we have this is where this equation right here comes from. This is the definition of the electric potential. It's the work done per unit charge. That's why there's no Q there because we divided both sides by Q. E dot dr. If E is constant, then delta V is equal to negative E dot delta R. Then what's V? Well, V doesn't matter. Okay, v, You can put V equals 0 wherever you want. Just like I can put Y equals 0 wherever I want. So um, the first question of, you know, if, what happens when you get to V equals zero? Is the electric field equal to zero? No, it's not. 
but even then, v doesn't have to get to zero. The zero of potential is an arbitrary location. That's the first point. So why does electric potential decrease in electric field? Why is that negative? Maybe that's the question. If that's the question, the answer is because it's the work done by that, but we moved it to the other side of the work energy equation. Okay, let's go on to the next part of the question. Um, okay, I know that E equals negative dV dr. Okay, that's actually not quite true. What really, and I wrote it over here before, if the, if, because see, you have this idea of a potential being a scalar, and if you want to go back the other way, it's kind of difficult. So really, it would be this, E equals the vector negative the partial of the potential with respect to x, negative the partial of the potential with respect to y, negative the partial of the potential with respect to z. Because imagine that this was a hill, uh, and there's a topographical map of a hill right here. So there's a peak, and it goes like this, and then these are contour lines. I'm just making up stuff here. So the, this is, let's say, 100, 50, 0, negative 50. These are uh, elevation lines. So if I want to find the, the slope of this, I would have to look at how the lines vary. Right here, the slope depends on how it varies in both the x and the y direction. So the downhill would be maybe this way right here, but that way right there. Okay, so that's why you have to, this is a gradient of the electric potential. The electric field is the gradient of the electric potential, and that looks like that. If you're in one dimensional, then, then yes, that could be true. But then you see the relationship between electric field and electric potential. Okay, uh, I brought a particle near a charge plate of infinite area. Okay, right here you're starting to, to move into the, the realm of crazy things lead to crazy things. Because if I have an infinite, yes, I have, if I have a plate and I have a constant electric field due to that plate, uh, and if I'm close to that plate. If it's an infinitely sized plate, then the electric field's infinite everywhere, but of course that can't be the case. You can't get an infinitely far away from an infinitely large plate and expect to have, you know, realistic things. So there, there's your problem right there. Uh, he gives the value, the she or he, this person, I'm sorry, butterscotch408. I don't know if that's, I, I apologize for my, uh, just saying the wrong gender. Uh, both the particle and the charge have the same polarity. So you put, so let's say that's plus, and that's plus, so this pl would push them away. Um, the electric potential de keeps decreasing with distance. That is true, if it's in a constant electric field, okay? Um, when it reaches zero, the force should not act on it. Okay, so here's the problem. Let's, let's plot this out. Let's plot in one dimension x, uh, and this is the electric potential. So let's start at some location, let's say right here, and I have my potential, uh, and it looks like this. And so the question is, eventually my potential is going to get to zero because the electric potential is decreasing, so wouldn't there be no force in the particle? But there's a constant electric field, and the answer is no. Because in this one-dimensional situation, Ex is negative the partial of V with respect to X. This is negative the slope of the straight line. So when I get down here to the uh, V uh, of X equals zero, is the slope zero? No, it is not. The slope is still the same. The slope is still has a negative value, which make the force positive in the positive direction. And this is a classic example of confusing slope and value. Uh, here's another graph. And this is V, I'm sorry, V versus X is one dimensional. What is the electric field at that point right there? The electric field is zero here because the slope of that line is zero, but the potential is not zero. So be careful, don't say V is not equal to E, right? You can say that, don't say that they are the same, but it's very common to say, oh, if something is zero, then its rate of change must be zero. In this case, we're talking about the rate of change of position, which we call the gradient, not the time rate of change. The electric field depends on the gradient of the electric potential. Okay, so I think that answers the question right there. Uh, the force should not act on it, but here, so really, I think 
the the first question was why is the potential decrease and the answer is because uh, the electric changes in potential are really due to work when you move to the other side you get a negative sign um, and then why is this force not go to zero and that's because the force depends on the gradient of the potential not the actual potential and the gradient of the potential is not zero right here if you wanted it to be zero you'd have to have something like this where it curves down and yes there the potential and the field are zero because the slope would be zero and that's enough for that hope that helps that was fun for me i'll talk to you later